After the most embarrassing week in the life of a congressman since Anthony Weiner, House Intelligence Committee Chair Devin Nunes has now decided it's up to him to say who the serious people are. Beginning to figure out who's actually serious about doing an investigation because it appears like uh, the Democrats are not very serious about this investigation. We're always going to keep the committee bipartisan. Uh, but at the, at the end of the day, we're going to do an investigation uh, with or without them. Some legal observers are now saying that Devin Nunes could be the subject of an investigation himself for something he said last week. In the dozens of reports I was able to see, uh, I was able to determine uh, that it was, it, it looks like it was legal uh, collection, uh, incidental collection, that then made it itself into intelligence reports. So it, it has to deal with FISA, and there's you know multiple number of FISA warrants that are out there, uh, but there's nothing, nothing criminal at all involved. Simply by mentioning the existence of FISA warrants, Devin Nunes may have disclosed classified information breaching an Intelligence Committee rule that states the Committee on Ethics shall investigate any unauthorized disclosure of intelligence or intelligence-related information. One national security lawyer told the Daily Beast's Tim Mack, quote, in my humble opinion, yes, Nunes disclosed classified information that day. The existence or non-existence of a FISA warrant is a classified fact. A spokesperson for Congressman Nunes said the chairman did not reveal any of the specific details of the information, such as the target of the collection, and did not reveal classified information. Joining us now, Tim Mack, senior correspondent for the Daily Beast. Ned Price, former senior director and spokesperson for the National Security Council. Also with us, Mika Oyang. She's a former House Intelligence Committee staffer and the vice president of the National Security Program at Third Way. Uh, Tim Mack, first to this legal question, uh, what did you dig up on whether or not Devin Nunes uh, crossed a legal line? So the House will state that, uh, that if there is an allegation uh, by as, as, as few as a single member of Congress, that the House Ethics Committee shall investigate the issue, that they shall launch some sort of inquiry as to whether the rules were broken. This is really different from other House, house ethics issues. You know, if there are campaign finance issues or other, there, are other, uh, there are other situations where people have been suspected of breaking House rules, there's usually a committee vote and, and it gets more complicated. But the rules are very specific when it comes to classified information and it means that there is a mandatory command shall investigate this issue. And it looks like uh, it's very possible that such an investigation has already begun, given the low bar to start such an investigation. Uh, Mika, you were, when you worked on the committee, you were subject to those same kinds of rules. What, what is your understanding of the rule, and what do you see uh, when you listen to the chairman speaking in the White House driveway there? I mean, these kinds of investigations are very rare because usually members are very careful about not revealing classified information, which is what was so unusual about the chairman's statement there in the front of the White House. Usually you don't talk about these things. You talk about them behind closed doors. Uh, Ned Price, I, I just want to, there's a, there's a point uh, in, in your <laughs> resume that's pretty unusual. You quit uh, at the, the CIA because of the election of Donald Trump. Could you just talk about that for a moment? Sure, Lawrence. This was the decision I came to uh, very reluctantly over the course of several months, having seen uh, uh, President Trump, now President Trump, as Republican nominee, uh, call the uh, intelligence community liars, casually cast aside their high confidence judgment that Russia was responsible for meddling in our election, calling them Nazis as uh, the president elect, and then uh, as president on his first day in office, paying a highly disrespectful visit to Langley, where he stood in front of the most solemn memorial memorial in all of CIA headquarters and talked about the size of the crowd at his inauguration the previous day. It was really the culmination of a series of data points, Lawrence, that led me to conclude that I could not in good faith serve this president as an intelligence professional. Tell us what you're seeing in this Devin Nunes story, including all those details about how he got access to the White House, who would have given him access, why is the White House covering up who gave him access to the White House. And why the White House at all? Why would the White House grads be involved at all in this story? 
Well, Lawrence, I think that's exactly it. The focus on Chairman Nunes, in my opinion, obscures the key role of the White House in all of this. Chairman Nunes is a pawn. He is a puppet. Uh, what, as soon as he confirmed that his meeting took place on the White House grounds, we knew one of two things. The White House was either the source of his information or they played matchmaker, pairing Chairman Nunes with, his, uh, with the source who provided him this information. You do not gain access to the White House compound without a White House staff member clearing you in. You do not gain access to a SCIF, a secure facility, on the White House grounds without a staff member escorting you in. And you do not gain access to a White House electronic network, as Chairman Nunes claimed he did, without a White House staff member logging you in. You know, Sean Spicer said today, 72 hours after he was first asked, that he still didn't know who cleared in Chairman Nunes. It would take about 120 seconds for a White House staffer to look into that matter. Look, I know the team there is new, uh, so I will tell them exactly how to do it. You go into the Waves database, an access, a database that most people uh, at the White House have access to. Type in Nunes, N-U-N-E-S, and it will show you exactly who cleared him in. And if it's not in there, that means his name was purged, which I think Lawrence raises even more serious questions about what exactly happened. And uh, Tim Mack, uh, previous White Houses have, have actually had these logs of visitors made public on a regular basis. It wasn't really a mystery about who was visiting the White House when. Certainly the Obama White House decided to make these logs public. Um, the Trump administration has not made a determination or at least is stalling on making a decision on whether to do so. When asked, uh, White House spokesman Sean Spicer has said they're still trying to figure out exactly how that's going to be done. If you go to the White House website right now and try to look at the visitor log, it's empty. There's nothing there. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether investigations, the House or Senate investigation, other investigations, look into this visitor log, try to obtain who visited the White House, and that may show the role of the White House behind this whole situation with Nunes. Mika, as a former staffer, if a member or the chairman in this instance uh, called you, told you, I've just been told about this information, uh, I now want to go see it. Uh, and I'm being offered the White House. What would you have said? I would have asked who in the White House is organizing this. I mean, members of Congress don't go to the White House to review information, usually without clearance from the highest levels of White House personnel who know what's going on there. You don't just come into the White House grounds without clearance. It's, it's really surprising. And, uh, and, and, and Mika, to, to the point of uh, Devin Nunes' behavior after all of this after uh, mm -hmm. the, that night or that time at the White House where he looks at this. He then decides that he's going to go tell Paul Ryan. And after telling Paul Ryan, he then decides he's going to tell the press. Then he's going to go tell the president. Then he's going to tell the press again. Uh, that whole sequence, uh, beginning with Paul Ryan as the first stop, uh, what do you read in that? What that says to me is that this wasn't about furthering the committee's investigation. It was about furthering the committee's investigation. He would have brought that information back to the committee, briefed all the committee members about it, shared it with the ranking member, asked for further information and follow-up information from the White House. It's one thing to go to the Speaker of the House to have the conversation to seek some guidance, but then to go from there to the press, from the press to the White House, back out to the public. I mean, that whole sequence of events, I've never seen anything like it. And Ned Price, uh, what's your reading of, of whether the chairman crossed the legal line here? Well, uh, uh, Lawrence, as you as you played, he certainly referred to the existence of FISA warrants. Anyone who has worked in the world of intelligence, whether on Capitol Hill or at Langley or anyone uh, anywhere in between, will know that FISA intercepts are the most sensitive uh, form of signals intelligence out there. Not only is it marked top secret, but there are also handling caveats uh, under that uh, top secret marking. By revealing the existence of FISA warrants, in my opinion, uh, uh, Chairman Nunes certainly revealed classified information. It, 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 what he said has the potential to tip off subjects of FISA warrants to the fact that they were being surveilled, which is what this classification seeks to prevent. Uh, Mika, uh, one of the uh, members of the committee, uh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, Jeremy Bash last night on this program offered the theory that uh, the chairman did all of this very deliberately and deliberately publicly chaotically, that he, he wanted it to be a public mess so that it would completely derail 
the House investigation. It, he sees this as completely willful conduct from the start uh, that, that was planned to have the effect that it has had. If that's what Devin Nunes is trying to do, I don't understand why he is sacrificing the bipartisan relationship that he has with Mr. Schiff, the, bipart the relationship of the committee, the committee's work on all the other important intelligence issues, to be deliberate to distract from the underlying issues of Russian interference and cooperation with potentially members of the Trump campaign to undermine.